All across Iran, it is the 10th consecutive night of historic protests there, amid an increasingly unforgiving and violent crackdown by authorities following the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini on September 16th. Three days earlier, Amini had been taken to a hospital after being arrested in Tehran by Iran's morality police, allegedly for violating Iran's strictly enforced dress code by not wearing her hijab correctly. Iranian state media released this video of what appears to be Amini collapsing. They claim that she died of a heart attack, but her family says they are lying. In the days since, extraordinary scenes of Iranians facing off with riot police, women cutting their hair and burning their head coverings, despite orders from Iran's president for authorities to, quote, deal decisively with them. A near-internet blackout has come to many regions amid deadly force. From The New York Times reporting on the story today, quote, at least 50 people have been killed and hundreds more injured or arrested. Rights groups say they believe the death toll is likely higher. Joining us, Nazamin Bonyadi. She's an Iranian-born actress and activist for women's rights in Iran. She's currently appearing on Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Thank you for spending some time with us tonight, today. Thanks for having me, Nicole. I wonder how easy it is for you to get word from um, friends and, and contacts in Iran to understand what's happening there right now. So I'm fortunate enough to have a, a channel uh, whereby they can communicate with me. So I receive hundreds of messages, particularly from younger Iranians. I'm talking teens to probably mid to late 20s who um, are just telling me that they're in dire straits, that they need us to continue amplifying their voices, uh, urging the media, the, the global media, not to give up on them. Uh, we've seen these protests uh, crack down brutally in the past and, and that they became part of history. They never were, you know, were ma managed to get anywhere. They ne didn't get, attain the freedom they wanted. So they are begging us to please be their voice and please um, continue covering this. We, um, and it's, it's such an important point that we can sometimes make decisions that we don't even know they're making, we're making by paying attention or ignoring something. Tell us what they risk by being out in the streets and protesting. I mean, what we're seeing is they're being bludgeoned with batons, they're being um, hit with pellets and, and, and bullets, live ammunition. Um, there's no mercy. This regime is cracking down brutally as it has in the past. The difference, of course, is now people are starting to fight back. You've got um, the protesters toppling down um, vans, patrol vans, attacking security forces, um, tearing down posters. This is very significant. Banners of Ayatollah Khomeini, the founder of the Islamic Republic, and Vasem Soleimani. And, um, and these are unprecedented images of women burning their headscarves. Um, they've taken them off and waved them in public before in, in former protests. This is a first. They're burning them, they're dancing in the streets. And they're not only calling for an end to compulsory hijab, they're calling, they're calling for an end to the Islamic Republic. What is it about the, the brutal treatment, um, and her family believes, um, you know, the, the murder of Amini that has ignited something that's obviously just under the surface for Iranian women and young people? That's a really great question. You know, before 1979, women, what people may not know, this is not a cultural norm. Cultural norms don't need to be forced, enforced, um, using batons, imprisonment, and, and the threat of death. Um, we, before 1979, women coexisted in peace, um, wearing hijabs or not wearing hijabs. It was free to choose. Um, you know, after 1979, this, the Islamic Republic basically took away, stripped women of multiple rights, many rights. You know, right now, women um, don't have not only bodily autonomy, they're segregated from men in the workplace, in the classroom, at beaches. They, they're not allowed in sports arenas. They can't ride a bicycle. They can't dance or sing in public. Um, they have little to no family rights. When it comes to uh, family law and divorce and, and child custody, you know, the man has, has the final say. Um, we, we're not. Women are not uh, equal to men before the law. And so the compulsory hijab has really become a symbol of the greater fight 
for freedom for women. And women in Iran are hugely educated, far more educated than the men, actually. So you're seeing people protest more because they know that what they're facing is unfair and unjust. And they demand the freedom, freedoms that we will um, enjoy uh, outside of Iran, many, of, many countries enjoy, and often take for granted. And I think this bodily autonomy is something that's resonated with women outside uh, of Iran, particularly in the West. And so we owe it to our sisters in Iran to stand by them. What is it that we can do? I mean, I think people are so stirred by the images and just to think of what they risk by being out there. Sometimes we take those rights for granted here and we shouldn't. But what is it that we can do from here? Absolutely. That's, that's another great question. So basically what we're calling for is keep Massa Amini's name alive. Be very conscious of spelling it in the hashtag. You may think a hashtag doesn't do anything, but we've, we've reached now over 85 million tweets using that hashtag, which has amplified the message. And the message is that Iranian people want freedom. They want an end to this uh, horrible uh, oppression of women that they're facing. But moreover, that there's more, it's now become more than that. We just want freedom. People inside the country want freedom. And so the more we amplify that, the more news gets out. But more important than that is that we have to each um, contact our representatives wherever we may be, um, whether we're in Europe or America, and make sure we, can, we tell them that we demand an international investigative mechanism to hold the, the leaders of the Islamic Republic uh, to, uh, to account. Uh, we don't have adequate human rights governance in the world to do that. And we have to be decisive and unified uh, in facing the, the Islamic Republic, just as we were with Putin and Ukraine.